You like your engineered lumber. I mean, you get the benefit of the fact that it is strong, that it is straight and true. Right, and you can do a lot with it. I mean, this is equal to, it's actually just a little bit bigger than a conventional 2x10. Yeah. All right? It's a little wider and it's a little higher. Now, you think about this as, as a 3 8 piece of core. If this core is higher or the flanges are further apart, that means the distance that they can span is greater. Okay. All right, now you have a lot of flexibility with this material. You can drill big holes in this for running plumbing. We don't have to worry about that here. But we have a floor that we know is going to be straight. When we're framing with conventional lumber, you take the lumber and you eyeball down here to see if there's a crown in it. So you flip it up the right way so the crown always goes up. With this material here, we don't have to deal with that. We know it's straight no matter how we look at it. Straight, we set it in hangers. And so as I look over there, you can see the hangers going in. So uh, there's a hanger right here, a little so, different than a traditional hanger. Yeah, this sits on the top of, let's say, the, the beam that we have on the other side. That sits on top like that. So if you're going to frame 16 on center, you mark it off 16 on center, you take the, the joist hanger, just lay it down like that, and you'd put it up tight on the top of the beam right here. You line it up, and these little pieces of steel that stick out like that, you tack it down, and that holds it on the line here. You eyeball it on this side, you tack this down there. Okay, so once those two little tabs are in, that holds the hanger into position. Then you would drive some hanger nails or hanger screws in place. Once you have those fastened to the beam, you take your eye joist and you drop it into the hanger. Now if you notice right here on each side, these little clips, you'd bang that down hard with a hammer. That would snap into place. Those little clips stop the floor joist from coming up and lessen the squeaking. Okay. All right, now we're getting the adhesive on there and we actually have a limited time before we can get this sheet down because the adhesive will skin over. Now, not only putting it on top of the joist, but you need to put a little bit of a bead right in the groove of the tongue and groove system. Because? Well, that does two things. It allows the sheets to go together easier, but it also stops the floor from squeaking. Okay. All right. Now we get a good bead down here where the two pieces are gonna come together and we want to keep a gap at this connection here on the end about an eighth of an inch. Drop it down, put your foot on top so it doesn't bounce up. All right, let it go. All right, now we gotta tap it over to me just to here. So we're gonna use a block so we don't damage that groove. And you're gonna tap it in gently till we get it in. Tap that right in a little more, tap it, give it a little. Go ahead, go ahead. One more. Yeah, you got about, lit. just give it one more. So you got about a 16 to an eighth inch gap there. All right, so now you're ready to nail it. You see how these marks line up with those joists all the way down? So you're gonna start on this side here and you're gonna nail into those marks, right like that, all the way down. Now, a lot of people don't know that the nail gun won't pull the material down. It will just hold it there. You wanna make sure that the material is tight to the joist. So what you wanna do is stand on each side of the joist, right here, pushing down, then you nail it, working with it. If you reach out, it won't go tight. How do you feel about that? It looks pretty good. So stand on each side and nail away. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.